Oh, hey there, guys. Figured I'd talk to you from behind the car for once. No, but seriously, this episode is going to be going over the headlights for the car. Now, it sounds pretty simple, you know, just go and make headlights or put them on the car. Not that big of a deal, but it was actually took quite a bit of work, and it was over the span of, like, months and months of, you know, thinking and adding things onto it um, over time. So let's get into that today. I'm going to start off by explaining the headlight setup that I'm going to be installing on the car. So I'm going to be going with HID projectors from the Retrofit source. These are all high quality and of course it's the full HID projector itself so it's not like you're just putting the uh, HID bulb in a regular housing. It is a full on projector and everything and it has a nice crisp clean cutoff with it so you're not blinding other drivers. First thing on the order list is going to be the Bi-Xenon projectors and you can look up what Bi-Xenon means but basically Bi-Xenon means that my HID acts for both the high and the low beam. So there's a regular low beam and then after that it has a mechanical flip up and then that goes to the uh, high beam. So you can see those right here. These are the uh, Morimoto Mini H1s. Then you have the uh, 35 watt ballast for it. You can upgrade to a 55 watt, but um, from my research on it was that it ran a little bit hotter, so you had a shorter lifespan running a 55 watt um, ballast on it. Then you have the HID bulbs. I picked the 4500K, it had a nice color. I like that one. You can see all the different specs in the bulbs on the website. Then we're gonna move on to the shroud style, which you can pick whichever one you want, blah, blah, blah. And then you have the wiring harness, which if I remember from all the way back then was, this is just the one that fit the 240SX, which was the H4 slash 9003. And this up here covers the actual HID like headlight setup. Then moving on from that are the accessories. So this over here is gonna be the uh, demon eyes. Demon eyes basically light up the inside lens with, you know, RGB LEDs. So you can see this is the RGB setup for the demon eyes. And with that, I needed an LED controller in order to control everything. So that controller comes with uh, basically a remote like this and that can control all your functions. I believe this one controller um, and the little module that comes with the controller can control up to three LED add-ons. So for instance, the demon eyes is one LED add-on and then uh, the second one was uh, LED halos. And the halos are also called angel eyes. So this is the angel eye kit, also an RGB. And these are the 70 millimeter ones because this is what they recommended for that specific uh, shroud on the HID. So this one controller over here controls both the demon eye and the angel eye setup. If I wanted to get a second controller, I could then independently control the colors so I could have the demon eyes one colors and set to do whatever and then the angel eyes another setup. But I wanted them all the same color anyway, so one controller, the two units. And yeah, that wasn't cheap. So this total headlight setup right here is $391 just for basically the HID setup and the LED add-ons to it. First thing to do is make the bracket for the tube front to hold the HID in place. I have the housing clamped to the sheet metal. I'm going to use it as a template and drill out the holes for mounting. And just like that, the brackets are now identical and they can both be trimmed to be perfectly symmetrical as well. So after using the jigsaw as well as a cut off disc on an angle grinder as well as that hand file right there. I got it, take it from this to that. Here's the housing for the HID. It sits in there. We got four screws of adjustment. Up, down, left, right. Get the beam to go where it needs to go. Here's the second one, done now. Since both are done, I'm gonna clean them up a little bit, just kind of trim them to size, make them even and then uh, prepare for welding it in the car. All 
All right, so here's the setup with the HID and mounting it on the tube front. So what I first did was use my angle finder. I have a level set up across the ground right there. I got the level of the ground, which happens to be 0.5 degrees to the right. And as you can tell, that's right at 0.5 degrees to the right, which means that it's gonna be level with the floor when you put the HID in there, because the HID has a crisp cutoff. And of course, that, that's taken off the actual HID housing itself, so you know it's gonna be accurate. Then I'm using this clamp to actually hold the bracket for the HID in place. Following that, I've also measured with the ruler out from uh, this radiator bracket on the tube front to the bracket on the HID housing and measured that to four and a quarter inches. And uh, that's gonna give me enough room for this cable to clear the other tube down there, which is why I had to have it over there. So that's the setup for how I got it there. I'm gonna go weld it in place before it falls. <laughs> that dealt with the bracket and now the next thing to move on to is to actually assemble the light itself which I guess um, there's not that much assembly to it the main thing was was getting the uh, angel eye onto the uh, shroud that just took a little bit of work it was basically just filing a spot into the shroud so that way the wire could run down for the uh, angel eye itself and then after that epoxying the uh, angel eye to the shroud and the shroud is this really tacky chrome color and I am going to be changing that uh, just whenever I have free time to work on the car because I want to make that probably just like a matte black and then after everything was assembled together, I then mounted it to the car. So for installing it, what I've done is I've put uh, four screws in the four corners of the projector. And I bolted it out over there with a nut and bolt. And then after that, I put another nut over here as well as another nut on the back side. So that way I could basically independently adjust um, the four points on the HID itself in order to move it left, right, up and down. So that way I could get the, uh, the beam exactly where I want it to. And yeah, that was it as far as mounting the HID to the bracket that I made. And that's the ballast right there and it's zip tied to the tube front. We thought of a whole bunch of things, but honestly when it came down to installing it, we're like, why don't we just use zip ties? It's like the easiest, fastest, and it uh, seems to work the best. So that's zip tied there. And the shroud is mounted with double-sided tape, and that's because the four normal bolt holes that it's supposed to use are the ones that I'm using for uh, mounting the actual HID to the bracket. So I had to double-sided tape that shroud on there. And then the zip ties on the shroud just in case because a lot of track days it gets really hot and then all of a sudden all your 3M double-sided tape starts coming off. So that's just kind of like a secondary thing to keep it in place. As far as wiring goes, they give you a wiring diagram when you purchase everything, so it's pretty easy to wire up. This car doesn't utilize any stock wiring, so it's kind of hard to explain wiring on something that's one off and doesn't really apply to that many people, but it is pretty straightforward. So yeah, pretty simple setup. Now with all that done, the next thing was to create a cover for the lights. It's not really there for protection. I know guys are gonna be asking me about, oh, it's a tube front and the HID is there and water is gonna splash on it. I've driven this car like over 60 miles and pouring down rain. I'm talking like rain so, like there's puddles so deep that like the engine was starting to steam from water being splashed up on it. And there was just water spraying everywhere on the tube front. Um, so the HIDs were constantly being sprayed with water. There was rain getting on there. Um, there was so much water pouring down the street that like if you lived on a hillside, all the trash cans were going down the street. <laughs> there's a trash can floating down the street. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Look, the entire road right now is just all water. <laughs> So I just got home right now and uh, Rico guided me the whole way because I couldn't see anything. So big shout out to Rico for doing that. Um, yeah, I got to pull this thing in the garage though. It's getting way too wet. So as far as the HIDs being exposed to the elements, that's not a concern. The cover is being made for aesthetic purposes. So today I'm going to be making some acrylic covers for my headlights over here. Oops. Let's show you how to do it. So first thing I've done is taken a template of the stock headlight lid and I've done that with cardstock over here. I've done this to get a basic pattern, so that way I can transfer it over to the uh, acrylic sheet over here and have a template for what I'm cutting out. I'm not using this to get the exact shape on the acrylic. I'm just using it more of a reference for the general size that I need. Um, I'm actually gonna be trimming it to fit perfectly after all of the bending uh, is done on this piece. For cutting it, I'm just gonna be using my angle grinder. I believe there are some other methods out there for cutting uh, acrylic, but I just use the angle grinder on pretty much everything, so I'm going to continue to use it on this, and it's worked out good so far. So the top line I've kept nice and straight, and I've used the edge of this piece um, to make a clean cut over here. The rest I've left extra, 
and we'll trim that down perfectly after doing the bending. I'm just going to take off all the burrs of the melted plastic, make it nice and smooth so it's just nice to handle. All the edges are relatively clean now. Um, I'm going to peel off the protective layer because we are going to be heating up this piece in order to form it over the headlight lid. And when you heat it up, this plastic actually uh, melts, this little protective one. So when you're doing this, you are going to need to remove the protective layer because otherwise it's going to melt and end up um, messing up the surface finish on your product. I shouldn't say product, I mean piece. And this is a nice piece of acrylic with the protective layer taken off. So here's my stock headlight lid. This is my piece of acrylic. I'm going to clamp this in place up top where it's flat. With the top edge clamped in, now comes the fun part of actually thermoforming this to the stock headlight lid shape. So the way I'm going to be thermoforming it is by using this heat gun. So I'm just going to heat up this area until the acrylic gets to that point where it's nice and soft and squishy. And then you can push it down. And then <laughs> and once it gets to that point, I'm going to hold it down with the clamps and mold it to the stock headlight shape. Wait for it to cool and then it'll keep the shape of the uh, part. That right there is pretty much the general idea of heating it up and getting it there. Um, I've practiced this a few times, so there's definitely some improvements you can make. I think if you're doing this, it's just going to be one of those things where you're going to have to keep practicing it over and over and over again. But so far, I've gotten decent results with this, and I'm sure uh, I'll get better and better results the more and more I do this. I am probably going to do some touch-up work, just make sure a lot of these edges are tucked under so I can get a nice roll to it. But more or less, this is it. Okay, so everything's done cooling. I removed the clamps now. I'm just going to trim up all the edges now. Um, specifically why I cut extra was so if I bent anything over like over here it didn't actually mess up the finish it kept you know nice finish over here I'll just trim all this bottom off um, I have my red paint marker so I'm just going to outline all this and then take an angle grinder to it and uh, should have a nice lid there we go fairly nice time to trim out the edge Look at that, there we go. And with the covers made, I moved on to the next step, which is to prep the hood in order to mount the covers to the hood itself. So I'm gonna be trimming away this inner sheet. It's gonna save weight. And number two, um, it really isn't fiberglass to the top panel, so it doesn't really add any support. So basically it's just unnecessary being there. Grab my respirator, very important when cutting fiberglass, you use a respirator. I am going to trim it up a little bit more, make it a lot nicer, make some final cuts, but that is the rough cut out of it. Just under seven pounds. Just under seven pounds there for how much I cut off. What I've done on the backside of this hood is fiberglass a section over here that I can mount my headlight lens to. <clears throat> I'm gonna repeat the process on the other side and show you guys how I did it. First thing I'm gonna do is attach my 3M double-sided tape around the edge. And the reason I already applied the tape right now is that way I can make the bottom flush and then fiberglass over it. And the fiberglass will go with the exact level that the tape should be at, so that way this sits flush on the opposite side. So with this applied, the next thing I'm going to do is just cover the entire thing with tape. 
The reason I'm covering with tape is to keep the fiberglass from actually sticking to the part. Now what I'll do is I'll prop up the uh, cover, make it flush. And I'm just going to tape the back side too, keep it flush. Cool. As always, I'll wipe the surface down with acetone just to prep it. Okay, so here's the fiberglass mat that I have, and I'm going to be using this. I'm going to be doing three layers. So I'm just going to pre-cut all of these pieces so that way they're laid out ahead of time. I'm just going to be using this Bondo fiberglass resin and then all this fiberglass is from Bondo as well. I'll just be mixing up two ounces and for every ounce you add 10 drops of the hardener. I'm just going to mix it up with my brush right here. It's a good idea to wet the base first. Now I'll be applying the fiberglass and basically just Spread on the resin with the brush. That's the first layer done. I'm gonna wait until it's about you know halfway, three quarters to being dry, and then I'm gonna do another layer and then repeat that process about three times. That should be the last layer, so I'm just going to wait for that to dry, and then we'll go to cutting it. And so I have all of my fiberglass resin in here, as well as on this brush. And so what I've been doing uh, in between layers is just taking acetone and dumping it in here. And then I can clean off the brush on a rag. And then I'll just dump this out into a bucket. So that way the container's clean again and the brush is clean again, ready to go and do the next layer. Okay, so this is after three layers now. It's all dry and hard. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just start peeling off the cover. Here's the headlight cover removed now. And of course the tape protected it, so that's all good. And the tape kept the, kept the resin from sticking. It's still a little bit sticky on the bottom, so I'll just wait for it to dry a little bit more before I start trimming it up. It's fairly dry now, so I'm going to take my angle grinder with a cutoff disc and just trim out the line that I want to keep. This is the rough shape of what I want. I'll probably just trim it down, make it a little bit nicer, and that'll be the finished product. So here you can see the mounting area from the front. As you can imagine, you're going to put the uh, cover right on top right there and tape it. Here is my lens now. I've tinted it black. I'm going to honestly redo the tint. This is just kind of rushed because I need to go to the track, but I didn't take my time doing it. So I'll make a new one of these that's a lot nicer. I'll take off my uh, double-sided tape on the back. And then I'll just go and stick it on. All right. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. In person you can't really see the yellow though. What I'll probably do is I'll uh, spray paint there when I spray the hood and then when I reapply it you won't even be able to see the fiberglass underneath it. But that looks pretty rad right there. 
Oh my god, it's so legit, dude. It is so legit. So here's the overview of it. As you can imagine, once the car is painted gloss black, it'll blend in really nice, as well as all the fiberglass back there painted gloss black. Here's all the demon eyes and how they look. Yeah, so. That'll be cool. Now the problem with this is that once I took it on the freeway and I was driving at 80 miles an hour or what have you, you know, the wind kind of pushed down on this and then it pulled the tape off. Also in the heat, the, it wouldn't stick at all. So at the track day, it was like 110, you know, 115 degrees and the adhesive on here just kind of started to lose all of its strength. So the solution to that problem that I found was to install three bolts over here held with nuts on the back side in order to keep the lens in place. That way there can be air pressure all on the front end over here and it doesn't pull up on this corner. So the first thing I'm gonna do is line up my piece over here, tape it in place. So I'm gonna drill in the corner over here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna mark about five inches away. Four inches. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is remove the lens and then countersink the holes so that way the bolts can sit a little bit more flush and uh, look cleaner. For countersinking, I'm just going to use my step drill bit and drill it out a little bit bigger. So I'll go one notch down, which will make the bolt sit pretty flush, and now I'm just gonna go a little bit further. Now with that said and done, it's pretty flush. Could get it a little bit more flush, but I just don't wanna risk cracking the actual lens, so I'll just keep it up above like that. Now that I'm finished drilling the holes and getting everything mounted, I'm gonna peel off this uh, terrible tint job that I did on these lenses and then redo them, and then uh, I'll get the finished product. Okay, this one's done. So, got my flat black, and I'll just paint this so that way it's not noticeable from the front. Oh, I'll just wait for that to dry, peel it off, that should be good for that. And I'm gonna be painting the top of the bolt heads as well black so that way they match. That should be it for those. Okay, so I'm gonna install my finished up lenses now with the uh, painted backings as well as the painted screws. And then I'm going to be installing some nylon lock nuts on the back to make sure that the uh, screws don't get undone. Okay, and as you can see, there it is. It's all nice and installed now, so it looks much better now that there's no bubbles in the tint. Um, the fiberglass behind it is all painted black so you can't see it, and then the screws on top are also painted black, so everything looks good now. See? So as you can imagine, if the whole car is painted gloss black, it would just blend in really well and look like um, stock S13 headlight lids. So this is how the car looks without the lights turned on, uh, painted gloss black. There we go. Turn them on. See them kind of just sitting there. Um, and of course you can do all your different colors, so... We have red, blue, we have, this is smooth mode, we have the fade, strobe, and then flash, uh, there's your white, I just set it on green so cops don't really bother. That's with both the angel eye and demon eye on, you could dim it, turn it up. And the LEDs for the Angel Line nearby, they're just accent lights, so it's not the actual headlight, like this isn't supposed to light up the road. What actually lights up the road is the, the HID, of course, so that's with the HID on. 
So you can see where the inside is, is now the color of the light. And this is how it looks when it turns on. So you can see the nice cut off and it's all adjusted. It's hard to see how much it actually lights up without driving it, but it does really well and it's better than stock. All right, that about covers it. I hope this video helped you guys out. If you're going to be doing some of the stuff, I know a lot of you guys messaged me about it. So now you get the whole look on the process of um, what I did to get all this. Um, I really like this setup. I think it looks good. Um, looks pretty good with the car all painted. And if you like that video, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Uh, visit offbeatgarage.com for merchandise as well as uh, products made by Offbeat Garage. Um, on top of that, check out What Monsters Do. So you can go to whatmonstersdo.com. Use coupon code LEDRIFTS to get 15% off your order. Everybody already knows it. Anyways, I hope you guys learned something, and I'll see you in the next one.